This is a quick introduction to the Rotary Plasma plugin. It is designed for four axis cutting of round or rectangular tubes. It works by wrapping your 2D drawing around the tube. So first we need to set up the tube dimensions. So options, Rotary Plasma. Flat sheet will do normal XY cutting. I wouldn't recommend it for complex jobs because the extra maths involved in the calculations for round and rectangular tube is still used and the post processor, processor may take quite a long time to run. Um, so we go to rectangular section, the width of the tube, again I've got it set to 50mm, you could set it to 100 and as you can see it updates the uh, material dimensions as you change the values. We go back to 50mm. These lines give you an idea of where everything is on the drawing. So that is the start of this corner. In that line there will be the middle, in that line there will be the end of the corner. Again that line is the start of this corner, middle, end, all the way around. That corner there is that point there. Then we go to round pipe. The only thing we set is the pipe diameter. The width of the material is still defined in job options as normal. So if we go back to rectangular section. So this drawing is basically cutting an assortment of holes. Then it cuts a 45 degree angle on the end and then cuts the tube off. Once you've set up your drawing, we can simulate it in 3D. So we click on the Rotary Plasma button, and then we've got a simulator come out in for 3D viewing. We've got the normal drag with the mouse to, to move around the screen, and then hold Shift and drag to rotate. So if we start the simulation, and then goes around and cuts the part. As long as you have your tube dimensions entered accurately, Torch will maintain a perfect clearance around the, the part, even around the corners. If you get your corner radiuses wrong, then you may end up with problems with, with the torch actually hitting the work or your work, the cut height varying. Torch height control will probably take care of it, depending on how good your torch height control is. With a rectangular tube, you have to be careful when cutting on the corners. As the drawing is wrapped around the surface of the part, it won't always cut as you expect it to. A good example is this 45 degree cut here. Looking at it from the side, you can see the distortion you get from wrapping a straight line around the corner. If you do need to do accurate cuts on corners, I would recommend drawing the part in 3D and then unwrapping it in CAD. The post processor assumes your control knows nothing about the diameter of the pipe. When cutting round pipe, the post continuously varies the feed rate to maintain a constant surface speed. On some controls, this continuously changing feed rate may cause rough running. Unfortunately, there isn't much you can do about that. The Rotary Plasma add-on is a mix of plug-in and post processor. Currently, there's only one post, and I'll quickly run through setting it up. So options, machine, post processor, the Plasma Rotary Mark III. So we edit the post. Oops. Ref distance. If PS points are closer than this distance apart, it won't bother to reference for the, second, for the next PS point. Remember, all dimensions in the post processor in, are in millimeters. Ref feed. This is the feed rate when referencing. When referencing, the reference switch generally has a small amount of backlash. This number tells the post processor how much that backlash it is, so it can compensate for it. We now have some scriber parameters. I won't bother to to uh, deal with those unless someone particularly needs them at the moment. Ref home. Set this to true if you're using the home switch for referencing. If you're using G31, then set this to false. Rotary axis. This is the axis letter for your rotary axis. Normally it would be letter A. It should be de defined as a linear axis, not rotary. When defined as a rotary axis, most controls wrap back, at back to zero at 360 degrees. The post does not expect this, and you can end up with incorrect cuts. Units per rev. This is the number of units for one full revolution. If your axis is set up in degrees, you'd use 360. In some cases, it may w work out better to use a unit of one for one revolution. If you want to modify your own post, it is relatively straightforward. You obviously need to allow for the A axis, which you have a new variable called end A. So you just change your on rapid, on move, and on arc to include an end A. Um, at the end of the post you need to add these two lines. They never change. 
and you obviously need to define somewhere your units per rev. You do need to be a bit careful when calling on rapid, on move and on arc. The plugin automatically intercepts these calls and wraps the coordinates around the pipe. Outside of these three functions, end x, end y and end z are flat coordinates. Inside the functions they're wrapped around the pipe. So that's, it's quite easy to get caught out by that. If you need to manually find a wrapped coordinate, then you use these two functions here. The first one, which should always be called before the query, query gets z, you, fe you feed in the flat y coordinate and it will return the wrapped y coordinate. In get z, this value you, you call here makes no difference whatsoever, so it's ignored, but it will return the wrapped z coordinate. You can also use query get a for the a coordinate. In this example, we're using query get z to get the z height for referencing and for piercing. And that concludes this quick introduction.